this is a great lesson idea for getting children to learn about sound and more importantly apply what they've been learning in a problem solving activity. Two important words we're going to talk about um, and they are <coughs> vibrate and this other one pitch which means how high or how low a note sounds. So a really low sounding note will be something like a really low sounding note and a really high sounding note will be something like ah! really really high sounding notes. <laughs> The first thing to make sure is that children understand that sound is produced by vibrations. What's happening to that band there when you ping it? Um, it's vibrating. It's vibrating, well done. Then it's a good idea to choose a bottle with a medium amount of water in it and hit that bottle. Hear that pitch? And establish the idea that the bottle and the water are vibrating to produce the sound. It depends on the amount of water, what's in it, the kind of sound that it makes. Do you think this one would You can show them another bottle which has less water in it and get them to think of whether they think that would be higher or lower or if they're not too sure. Hands up if you think it's going to make a lower pitch sound. Get their predictions and then hit that second bottle and see if they were right or wrong. And the second one. Higher or lower? Higher. Higher, well done. And then take a bottle with even more water in it than the first one and then again ask them to predict if they think it's going to be higher or lower. Hit that one and see if they were right or wrong. Much lower. You can hardly hear, really hear it at all. Your challenge on your table groups is to fill those bottles with different amounts of water. Get the children to do this task of working out the three notes in Three Blind Mice and to try and work out the different pictures of each one by filling the bottles with water. Off you go. Children really love doing this activity. It's a great one for getting them to talk with each other and getting them to problem solve and working through something themselves. Hit that one. Three, nine, nine. And then get them to work out from that that the less water that's in there, the higher the note that's being produced. And the more water they have in the bottle, the lower the note that's being produced. And the less water, the higher sound. Okay, well done. It's a really good idea to use glass bottles and metal spoons because they vibrate really well and produce a good ringing sound. Plastic or wood tends to be a bit more muffled and the children can't really distinguish the pictures easily. Activities like this always generate lots of interesting questions from the children. If you put like a stone in there, like mm -hmm. lots of stones in there, filled up the bottle, would it make any difference to lots of water in it? That's a question I don't know. That's a really good question, it's something for us to investigate. We shouldn't be daunted by questions that we can or can't answer, um, but that's actually about being a scientist, asking these sorts of questions that the children can investigate. So with these two boom whackers, point to the one that's going to make the highest sound. That one on that side or this one on that side? Let's test. And so that's the lowest. There's a good opportunity to assess pupils' progress in this activity by seeing if they can apply what they've learned about the different pictures of glass bottles to other instruments as well. This is a great lesson idea for teaching about light travelling in straight lines. I've got a bit of a problem, children. You know it was wet play this morning? Yeah. Well, when you weren't looking, I was looking out the window. And you'll never guess what I saw. What? Little children playing on there. From the infant school. I normally give a problem at the start of every lesson just to give children a bit of a challenge and to motivate them. How can we keep a safe eye on little children playing on the play frame? But there's only one rule. We don't want to be seen. Do you want to have a think about it? What could we possibly do? Keep cameras around. I thought binoculars. We could use a periscope. That's a great idea. What do we think of that, children? It's a great idea because it links the science of light reflection with the actual making and evaluating of design and technology. Now, our invention, you have to make using the equipment that is on your table. 
I placed all the equipment inside a plastic wallet because this helps organisation and reduces the preparation time. If you look at that, you can see what's there. The flex here so we can see what they're doing. Eleanor already is folding her card into a cube shape. We have Zach designing his plan. We have Ashley and Mia and this table talking about positioning their mirrors to reflect light. So I think we are ready to get started. Are you ready? Steady. Go for it, children. Go. Don't expect all the children to make a perfect periscope. When they don't make a perfect periscope, that's when the learning starts. Give them time to play with the mirrors because this helps them understand the idea of reflection and light travelling in straight lines. That flex. They're exploring all the different concepts they have about light. Yeah, I can see that. The way the periscope works is light travels uh, into this hole where this mirror is, and so it travels down to this mirror here and travels out and into your eye. Mia made her periscope and she was telling everybody what she could see. I can see the construction features with the red one and the yellow one. To see her smiling and her engagement and her enjoyment is what science is all about. Goodness me, children. Now, how on earth does that work? The mirrors reflected what was behind you and when you looked into the periscope, it showed it. Yeah. I think the children enjoy this lesson idea because they are actually exploring and developing their ideas. And if it doesn't work, then that's OK. They can work out why it wasn't working and work out the next steps to make it work. Would you like to come out here, Jack? I will show you. At the end of the lesson, it's a great idea to use a laser pointer to show how light travels through the periscope. You've got some bits of string which you can take around each finger or you might just have one piece of string and you can wrap it around one or two fingers. This sounds like a really odd and quite unusual activity to do, but it's just one that it's, you just have to try. And then I'm going to ask you to put your fingers just over your ears, just kind of over the flap of your ears so that you hold it there. And then if you tap this coat hanger and see what that feels like. See if you can feel the vibrations running up from the coat hanger through the string. You have to get a metal coat hanger and tie a piece of string to it, wrap that string around your finger and then put the finger onto your ear and then hit the metal coat hanger or get a friend to hit the metal coat hanger and the children should be able to almost sense the vibrations travel from the coat hanger up the string to their ears and it becomes really echoey. This is a really good activity to do um, because they can see the vibrations when the coat hanger is hit and sense those vibrations as they travel up through the string and to their ears. Yeah, you can hear it vibrate when it's on your ears. This is a really good lesson idea that uses the children's understanding of light to test different materials and explore their properties. On your tables you've got, you've got a box. And that box has got lots of different materials in, different objects. And you've also got a lovely torch. Now we've not used these before, have we? So I'm going to show you. The button on the side turns it on. OK, and you're going to just have a play with the torch and the materials to find out whether the materials let the light through a little bit, whether they let all the light through or whether they block the light. I want you to try, Angus, to use the proper science words. Transparent, translucent and opaque. Um, 
We introduced the three words um, opaque, transparent and translucent um, and from the very beginning they were really, really excited about using them. They were new words, they hadn't come across them before. What do you think that is, Elodie? Translucent. Livy, do you want to come out and open it? The children come back to the carpet um, and I produce a letter that's been delivered by the three little pigs. Oh. Now, Mrs Wright said this morning she heard lots of little trotters trot, trot, trotting around school delivering the letter. And from that moment on, you've kind of got them in the palm of your hand. Hello. They're listening, they're eager, they want to find out what's in the letter and what they've got to do. I know that you're all very, very busy children, but we have another problem and we really need your advice. Our bedroom curtains have been ruined. We have tried to make some new ones but the light is still getting through. As you are all such experts, we wondered if you could find out which material makes the best curtains. I think it makes them more interested and more keen to solve the problem because it's something that they care about. We've been working on the story of the Three Little Pigs in literacy and we've also done a series of other investigations using the characters of the Three Little Pigs. So they really, really want to help them and want to do their best. <laughs> The children put a toy pig in the cardboard box and put the lid on um, and in the lid there is a hole cut uh, to be the window. The children look at the different materials available and they make predictions about which material will let the light through or which will block it. The children make a prediction by scoring the material out of 10, with 10 out of 10 being a really good material that blocks all of the light. Um, and zero out of ten being a material that lets all the light through. What do you think it'll be? I think it would be probably okay. At this stage, it's really easy to pick up on which children have grasped the concept and which are still struggling or if there's any misconceptions. So if a child was to score a translucent material at zero out of ten, you'd kind of know that they needed a little bit more help. The box has an eye hole on the side for the children to look through. They then test the material by looking through the hole to see if they can see the little pig inside. If this is 10 out of 10, what special property does that material have? Opaque. It's opaque, good. It's really important to remember that the children's eyes need to adjust to the darkness inside the box. So what they first of all thought was totally opaque might actually turn out to be translucent when their eyes get used to it. Who found a material that they would give 10 out of 10 to that blocked all the light out? I really like the idea of the curtains for the three little pigs because it's um, putting the science in a context for the children that they really enjoy and that they find really exciting and fun.